I know you've said a lot about Penny Hardaway in the current state of the Memphis basketball <laughs> program. I've said a lot about Penny Hardaway in the current state of the Memphis basketball program, but we ain't talked about it together. Yeah. What do you make of Penny Hardaway in the current state of the Memphis basketball program? I'm just sad about it. Me too. That's, I'm just, it, that's it, yeah. it. I'm just sad about it. Right. It's not like I just want it to be fun. Right. I want it to be fun. I want it to be. And, you know, just reading that article, which we laughed about it yesterday, mm. but, but it was on. I mean, your boy Rothstein. Yeah. Bro. Yeah. You can't tweet out. A very candid interview with Penny Hardaway. And then I read the interview, and the first question is, this past week you made several staff changes, and the answer was, I don't want to talk about that. (laughs) You can't. I mean, that's got to be later in the interview. You can't say very candid, and then the first thing be him avoiding a question. We all all have strengths. Not that candid. Uh, Not that candid. Not that candid. Like, we all have strengths and weaknesses, right? <laughs> and John is the best news getter in the business. He just is. Yeah. Um, but he's not going to, you know, he's not going to pop on Twitter and start ripping somebody or write the column. That I don't, the whole dude, I don't of, expect him to. I just don't yeah. expect him to tell me that I'm about to read something <laughs> yeah, very it. candid. I understand. And then the whole thing is just, here's a question, and here's Penny talking about how he's got it worse than everybody else, right. and he doesn't need this job. All right. And when you get to the point where those are all the answers, yeah. you know what I mean? You know I love this guy. I just like it, it just depresses me, man. Right. We're to that point. And you've been around here long enough, and I said this. This has happened with every coach. Mm-hmm. Every coach. Mm-hmm. Every coach thought they had it terrible here. It was early with John. It, it happened with John. It happened, it happened with, with Josh. It so. happened with Larry. It yeah. happened. I mean, all of them. Yeah. Every one of them. And... It's just always it's always sad to me, man. It's sad to read a guy that, you know, the the pressure feels so great and it's obviously not as fun as it used to be and it's not about hey, yeah, here's things that have happened, here's what's gone on and here's what I've learned. Future is bright. Right. Can't wait for our team that we've got coming up and I think we're going to be able to prove some people wrong. And for the people that don't think I can get this done, I think, you know, just stick with me, you right. know, this kind of stuff. But instead, it's like. It's just defiant. Yeah, it's and, just like mega mega defiant, mega defensive. And, and that and, just stinks. It stinks. I, I understand it. I understand it. But again, to read it, it's like, this doesn't make me excited. I just right. want to be, you know what I mean? Like, I, as, I've, as I've said many times, things with any team. You know, I and uh, sports are an escape from real life for people, and they their lives are affected by the wins and losses. Their moods are affected by mm-hmm. the wins and losses, and they just love rooting for their team. You and I have been through it over the course of I resented last year. You resented the Mets so badly, as did I, with the Cardinals, and it got to the point where it's like, bro, this is like what I do for fun during the summer. Right. Like I flip it on, and they don't bring me any joy. Right. And then I just stop doing it, right? right? And it's like I don't want to get it to the point where it's like a joyless operation. And, and right now it's like – I want you, you. You want to be excited for this upcoming season. You want to be excited because you're playing in these cool non-conference games, and you're going to play playing in these uh, cool out-of-town tournaments against massive name programs like UConn, et cetera. And all we're talking about is drama right. and about how oh is you know uh, and what and, and possible violations and staff overturn and you know. Like, we're having to recount, like, what's happened. Like, he brought up, and I know you recounted yesterday, like, the first six years. It's like, well, why are we even talking about any of that? Right. Like, you know what I'm saying? Well, why are see, we even talking about any of that? Like, I just want to talk about what's going it, None of it matters. None of it matters when they tip off. Right. Right? Like, that's the great thing about sport is we don't have to worry about what's happened up to this point. We get to we get to worry about what's about to happen right. going forward, and instead it's just this constant recounting of everything that has happened, rather than being excited about what is about. It's like if I sat there every day right. and talked about how awful last year was for the Grizzlies. Right. We're not doing that. Right. We're not, and we're not even sitting there talking like, oh my God, and the coaching staff's all new, and uh, you know what I mean? We're sitting there, and hope springs eternal. 
going forward and you're excited about an upcoming season. Oh, everybody's going to be healthy and everybody's going to be this. And instead of, I swear to God, I don't know anybody on this team. I know. That's the problem. Nobody. Like, like that whole interview could have been about you should see in practice. Like, I'm mm-hmm. not hearing about guys in practice. I'm not hearing about exciting stuff yeah, going who's on. Who's going to be the star I, of the team? Right? We don't even right. know what's like, the start. Like, we should be talking about, hey, what's our new starting lineup going to look like? And you couldn't even hey, name five players. No. Bro, I have no idea who's going to be playing this year. Right. But, again, it's like this whole – news cycle about an upcoming Memphis Tiger basketball season has nothing to do with basketball. Right. Nothing. It doesn't have anything. To, I should be reading about who's showing out in practice, who is like the secret, who's the secret get, right? Like everybody talking about this kid from this place and everybody talking about this kid from this place. But here's the one but you got to keep one on. That's right. going, and nobody's talking about that. Nobody's talking about players. Nobody's talking about, hey, and they're added – Nolan Smith, and they're adding Mike Davis, and here's what they bring to the table, and here's why things are going to be different, and things why things are going to be better. Because to your point, forward. you ready for this? And none of that is like none of those are the stories. And none re- of them. And you ready for this? Here's the, here's their actual basketball reality. They're probably a preseason top forty team. They are projected by everybody to make the NCAA tournament, and will be picked to win their league. Right. And that doesn't get discussed at all because we're so focused on the chaos. Right. And I would. But I mean, again, 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 and instead of talking about the chaos, and I get it, right? He wants to defend himself yeah. and whatever. It's like, where is all of the. We're less than three weeks from the season, and nobody knows anything right. about this team. But the thing it's that, bizarre. The thing that. Uh, Who are these people? The thing that disappoints me, I guess, is. Um, you read the. Uh, you know, because I clicked on it the same way you did. Candy QA. Okay, let's hear what he has to say. And there's almost nothing in there taking responsibility for any of this. Mm-mm. And there was somebody in my own life a few week, months, ago, whenever, and they're, they're going through it a little bit. And I was trying to talk to them, you know, just, just check it in, really. And you just say, so what's going on with this? What's going on with that? And everything was bad, but nothing was this person's fault. Mm-hmm. It was like, well, you know, so-and-so did this, and that was, and then so-and-so did this. And I was like, your life is a wreck right now. And you don't think you played any role in it, all right? Like that, like I just sort of hung up the phone, like sad, like yeah. you, like you don't get it at all. Like maybe not everything's your fault, and there could be explanations for, but like you don't, you're the common denominator in all this stuff. And when I read that Q and A with Penny, it's like he just says things that are like, um, I, I wish people would uh, judge me the way they judge other people. We don't know any other people like you. Who else fired four coaches in September? Who else has been investigated? This many times since you've been mm-hmm. a head coach in Division One, Madison, you are one of one. And he starts saying, like, look at my first six years and compare them to other people's six years. Well, I've done that before. Mm-hmm. It ain't good. Mm-hmm. You're you are the least accomplished Memphis basketball coach of my lifetime who has spent at least six years at my alma mater. And the truth is, just like I wrote, if his name were anything else, he wouldn't be the coach of Memphis anymore. If he was anybody else, he wouldn't be the coach of Memphis anymore. And rather than understand that and be appreciative of the leeway that he's received especially from the local media he just seems mad well i don't think he feels like he's gotten leeway i know he doesn't feel that way but he He doesn't feel like he's gotten leeway. but he has well i mean i am on i am more on the side of i i worry greatly about the future of memphis basketball if he is not there I, i look i mean i can worry with him there as well but as i've expressed to you many times like i don't think like i look right now and i see that they just had, you know, what was the story? They got 10,000 season ticket holders yeah. for football. I mean, like, what has happened to this conference is oh, devastating. Yes. Mm-hmm. And I, uh, and he is the only thing that makes that not just falling back into the, you know, Andy Kennedy's a good coach, right? right yeah. Nobody gives a crap about UAB, no. and UAB doesn't get to play against UConn, right. and UAB doesn't get non-conference games, and they're not still a brand that's on CBS and, right. like, all this stuff. And I worry about his, if you just had 
a regular guy. Like, yeah, I know you brought up yesterday with, like, Dusty May. Like, Michigan doesn't need Jawan Howard right. to be— They're still Michigan. Yeah, but, like, what happens yeah. with Memphis if it doesn't have somebody that's bringing real juice— to that program, and, I, I, and somebody and I, that is able to get players to go to that program. I just I worry about their ability to get players. I wor- I mean, I worry about their ability to get good non conference games. And, it could really, like, for the first be time, become. It could really, for the Say first time, you want. It's relevant. Whatever, it's relevant. Whatever league they've been in throughout my lifetime, it has always been big time basketball. Yes, they're at a real risk of becoming a mid major basketball for sure. program. Yeah, and 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 also like. You know, again, you live here, so uh, obviously when you write a column about it, um, people know, and you're going to have a big audience in the home city in which you do something. But whether you wrote that column or not, that whole story about Penny Hardaway and the program and the four assistant coaches and whatever else was the lead item on ESPN. Mm -hmm. And it's simply because, like, I do worry that it's like, what you know? Do I things w- wish things are better? Yes, but I do love the relevance. Right. I love that Memphis basketball still matters and still isn't can evoke headlines. And I worry greatly about what we'll have to go for because I look around and like we ain't even got SMU left. Yeah. We don't even have them. I mean, just think. What we don't even have UCF, UCF left. Yeah. We got yeah. like no. This is yeah. nobody's. Yeah. It's Troy. It's Texas San Antonio. It's like nobody that was like we went from Conference USA to the AAC, and now what this AAC looks like is way worse Mm -hmm. than Conference USA Mm -hmm. when at least you know when the the passenger the first passenger years Mm -hmm. when we had because at least then we still had Louisville, we still had Cincinnati, we still had Houston, we still had like real schools. Yeah, like I mean, real you, schools. These UConn are, was in there for a minute. We ain't even got anybody. We no. got nobody. No. no, and that's the other scary thing for Penny heading into this season because I do think it's an important season for him. Like if they don't make the tournament, it could get it could be time. And like he's coaching in a one bid league. Mm-hmm. It might come down to you better win your conference tournament. Like it, 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 it and could, they should. Yeah, they should. But like that's a. Hey, go go win three games in a row, or else. Yeah, that's that's not fun. No, it's not. But I mean, again, you you have those non conference games that give you the ability to rack up wins mm-hmm. against people that they do last. Those things last, and last year's would have lasted. Right. I mean, it would have mattered if you wouldn't have, you know. Freaking lost to Rice and Low Main and all these other <laughs> crap places. Well, that's the, that's the thing. They, he can fix a lot of this. Just go win Maui well, or sure. go go two and one in Maui. Mm-hmm. That's like it. you know, but but again, we're not even talking about right. any of that. Right. It's like yeah. it's it, like this. Uh, it, we, we just keep talking about what 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 has been going f- and nothing about like again. You just posted that roster, a Nick Jordan and Musa Cisse. Yeah. Yeah, like well, that's the only two, and I. I but and that's, of course, good, that's good enough to win the AAC. Well, yeah, there's they, no doubt. Well, yeah, they have a roster good enough to win the AAC, but like just. To well, spe- I'm saying of the guys I knew to speak right, to right. speak oh, to the relevance. I put this in the column when I was 10 years old. I could name you every Memphis starter plus Denny Crum, Purvis Ellison, and LeBradford Smith. Yeah. I knew Louisville starters. Yeah. If I went to my 10 year old right now and said, Tell me everybody you know who plays for Memphis, he'd first say the Grizzlies, and I'd say no. And he'd say, Who? And I'd say the Tigers. And he'd say, um, Penny Hardaway. I'd say, That's the coach. Name a player. And he'd say, I don't. He'd be done. He doesn't know. No, my kids don't know this. No. The Gary Parish Show, live weekdays at 10 a.m.